If you have not subscribed yet, please click that little icon in the bottom corner. Please like this video because it shows the support towards my channel. Thank you for all the support so far in this channel. I really do appreciate it. And enjoy the next video. So with the defensive short corner variations and setup that you can do, um, if you if you don't play in an international game where you can actually have footage of the opposition to see how they set up and all of that, um, I tend to use just two variations. Uh, sometimes I just I'd use the one because yeah, you don't really know what the team is that you're playing against if you just getting to the game and this is the first time you see them. So in this video I will only show you two variations that I use. Um, the one I don't use very often. You, you will probably use that one if you play in a tournament like I said and you have footage and you can um, see the variations and all of that then you can start using that specific one. But the two I'm going to show you is the most common one that most people use is three high. So your first wave will be the first um, uh, first runner. <clears throat> first wave, he's going to go up towards the castle. Um, the castle is where uh, if the injector passes out, the person that stops the ball and the person that's going to drag. Because the drag flick is such an important part of uh, short corners nowadays, that not a lot of people are actually using variations anymore. If they have a good drag flicker, they will just drag flick it and score a goal like that. Um, you will find uh, a lot of, if you play against, if you're coaching girls, I'm not saying anything about the girls, but if they don't have a drag flicker, they will start using more variations in a way um, because they don't have that drag flicker option. But the most common one that most people use is you will set up like this, so the green one is the keeper. Uh, you'll have a postman on this side, you'll have first wave, second wave, and then the postman at the back. First wave, your job is to run down the line to where more or less P-spot is. As soon as you get to P-spot, you're gonna make your, run a little bit in a 45 angle to get to the top of the D. Uh, this postman, you're gonna step out and you're gonna step a little bit sideways, not too far, and then the second wave, you are going to step more or less where P-spot is and stay there. And then postman, as soon as they are out, you're just going to protect the post over here. The main reason for this variation running out is to give the keeper a clear view of where the ball's going to go. So he's got more time or she's got more time to see what's happening in the goal um, or in the short corner. And it will give her and him a better chance to stop it. If you are this postman over here and the ball's being hit or passed onto your left foot, if it goes past your left foot, you as this postman, you need to not just fling out a stick or try and stop it. You need to be uh, confident enough and trust your keeper that he's he or she's going to save it don't just flick out your stick if it comes to your left foot because as soon as you do that anything can happen it can deflect and it can go into the goal you need to be disciplined enough as this postman to not just fling out a stick if it comes to your uh, left foot if the ball from the air goes to the side second first wave or second wave apologies will then step and put pressure on the second castle. If that happens, then first wave is just going to backtrack and try and manage from here. If the ball goes back to pusher, then this postman will step and put pressure, and then the two first and second wave will go back and try and manage. If it hits the keeper's pads, they're going to try and get it off the pads and clear it. But this is the most common one that they tend to use because it just gives the keeper so much more time to see the ball um, and to make a perfect save from there. With the variation, the next variation that 
you'll probably use if you're playing in a tournament or all of that and you have footage from the previous uh, game or the game that you're playing against is the 2-2 two -two or the 2 high you can call it whatever you want as a coach but you'll have first wave and second wave on either side of the keeper so this specific variation will try and you will try and limit the options if they use quite a lot of variation so if they on top here and they do a lot of zigzag and they do a lot of passing the ball is to try and protect this area of the circle because the variations will go where they pass the ball and they're trying to get past the first and the second wave and they will try and just put the ball in this space so that they can have a great opportunity to score but with the 2-2 two -two is first wave or second wave you will technically just run until more or less where that p spot is and you'll set up where the second wave or the postman's will set up and then we'll basically make like a small little box in this little space over here where if they do a variation you as the first and the second wave can actually anticipate and you can stop the ball if they pass it you can step and intercept it um, but this is generally when you know that they don't have a drag flicker and they do quite a bit of variations just to help out that scenario where they eliminate the first and the second wave by just passing and then they have a clear opportunity to score from there. This variation is not being used much, but like I said, you're going to use this if you have footage from the players you're playing against and you can see, oh, they don't have a drag flicker, they have a lot of variations that they're doing, and then you can try and <clears throat> set up like this to anticipate what they're doing and maybe stop a lot of goals from being scored.